So several years ago when I was working in Washington, I had the real pleasure of getting to know Larry Weber, who has become a, a great friend of mine. And what Larry has been able to do through his career, and you have it in, in the app, he's run one of the largest advertising and PR firms in the world, Weber Shamwick, I'm sure you've heard of it. He started multiple companies in the digital space. And the reason I invited Larry to come here this year to speak is because this whole theme of entrepreneurship and what's happening in Michigan is all about the new wave of entrepreneurs and how the digital economy is impacting how our world works and how our entrepreneurs actually move the economy. So with that, please welcome my friend, Larry Weber, CEO of RacePoint Ventures. I'll, I'll try on purpose not to be as exciting as Mayor Duggan. Uh, yeah. But I can promise you this, that Mayor Duggan will be more successful if he has a thoughtful digital strategy for Detroit. And one that encompasses entrepreneurism in everything from music to urban agriculture and a number of other things. So if you want to stick around, I'll give you some points, Mayor. Uh, I will not, um, some things you should be thinking about uh, before I um, finish my 15 minutes and talk with the reporter. Um, I, my career goes back about 35 years. I'll be signing my fifth book out here. It took me 35 years to get marketing down. So, and I, I'm sure it's right. I'm not gonna talk about digital marketing. I'm just gonna tell you a couple stories about digital marketing to tell you where we are today. Uh, first, I need to do a little, well, they're still here. Uh, how many tweet? Has anybody tweet in this room? How many have been on Google already today? How many have been on Google more than 10 times today? How many have checked LinkedIn? Facebook? Anybody do a Snapchat or an Instagram? A little lighter there, huh? Yeah. How about YouTube? Anybody go on YouTube today? Yeah? All right. And how about Amazon? Has anybody shopped on Amazon in the last month? Oh. So my first story about where di the digital world's going is on Amazon, OK? Uh, I got a uh, permission-based email. Did everybody know what a permission-based email is? One of the most underutilized marketing techniques in the world. It's once you have business with somebody, they send you an email, OK? Can't believe banks don't do that. But anyway, um, the uh, I got an email from Amazon. It says, Mr. Weber, we noticed that you like very much uh, American writer named John Updike. And uh, we know he recently died, but we, we found some rare videos of him that we're going to post on Tuesday of him reading from his rabbit novels. All right. So I said, this is cool. All right. So you're all going to say, Larry, you really have to get a life. And, you know, because um, I was on Amazon this night for an hour and a half. Now, why was I on Amazon for an hour and a half? Well, I went and looked at these videos. Well, first I made a drink, and then I went into the library, and I uh, watched these videos, and uh, I noticed that there were lots of other videos. Does everybody watch now videos of authors on Amazon? Anybody? You should do it. It's really pretty cool. And I watched a few other ones, and I noticed there was one of one of my favorite Southern American writers, William Faulkner. Remember this fact because this is all you're going to have to know about digital marketing, OK? All right. And uh, they had him accepting. I didn't know that they had the film of him accepting the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1949. So I watched that. And then I went to the review sections, and I read some reviews of my fourth book. And I was really mad because some guy in Taipei hated the book. And there's really nothing you can say about it, OK? And then tomorrow's guest, I wrote a review of of uh, Malcolm's latest book, uh, and you know, said, gee, it's really nice. It's nice that you wrote The Tipping Point for the fourth time. And <laughs> don't tell him I said that. <laughs> and then uh, I went and bought about 11 books. I uh, bought a couple for myself, my wife, a couple for clients, a couple for my kids. But I also went to places that I didn't buy books, so I went to maybe and looked at about 20 books that I didn't buy. Uh, so all in all, what happened? 
Amazon got $312 of my money. They seem pretty happy, all right? I actually wrote some reviews, so I was part of the community, right? I read some reviews. I was entertained. I stayed in a digital destination for an hour and a half. That's the job of marketers today. How to get you to stay in a digital destination for as long as possible. Engagement is the most important thing in digital marketing. Guess what? I went on Amazon about two weeks later, and what was the first thing on the screen? And I was fine with this. In fact, I was great. It said, hi, Larry. Would you like to buy the upcoming new bi biography of William Faulkner for $5 off? Sure. It knew. Second story. I was on a panel with the uh, founder of Starbucks, um, Howard Schultz. And he said, would you like to be a guinea pig for a uh, loyalty program? <laughs> sure. Why not? And so I didn't hear anything from them. About two weeks later, I get an email from somebody in the marketing department at Starbucks, and they said, would you just fill this out? It was sort of like a survey monkey. By the way, tip one, MailChimp, constant contact, great things for businesses, especially small businesses. But anyway, so I fill this out. I say, what kind of coffee I like when I usually go into a Starbucks, what kind of food I buy when I'm in a Starbucks. And I forget about it. They had my phone number. And I was taking, I had a client in England. This was during the British Olympics. And I took my middle daughter. And across from the hotel, I saw Starbucks on Kensington High Street. And I said, oh, let's go get a, a Starbucks. And right as I said that, I got a text. And the text said, Larry, come into the Starbucks across from you at 373 Kensington High Street for your free espresso, iced espresso. And if you'd like a breakfast sandwich, we'll give you 50 pence off. I said, this is cool. Let's go see if it works. Because my daughter thought it was spooky. She thought I was going to get hit by a drone. <laughs> and, uh, but I go in, and sure enough, boom. Next tip, loyalty is going to be huge. If I was a young kid and interested in marketing, digital loyalty and couponing is going to be one of the hugest businesses. All right. uh, last thing, I'll tell you a story, and then I'd like to tell you a little bit about entrepreneurship and what I've learned in 35 years of helping entrepreneurs, from Steve Jobs uh, to Tim Berners-Lee, who founded the web. Uh, and um, th this story is just more recent. My oldest daughter, of course, graduates. I spent almost $52,000 a year for her to go to an elite school. It's a great education, but she's living back at home <laughs> now. And uh, I said, hey, Anna, you know, I've, you've been gone for four years. What if we pick one TV show that we watch together, you know? And she said, OK, cool, Dad. And so we picked The Voice. All right, this, you know, the, you, you all know it. So I just only have my iPad, and I think I did have my iPhone. Now I do work for Samsung, so I have to have a Samsung phone too. But anyway, the, I sit down, and I, you know, having a glass of wine and watching The Voice. Now here comes Hannah, and again, 23 years old, all right, important from a, uh, behavior point of view, if you're all interested in these things. And she puts her glass of wine down. She sits down. She opens up a laptop. She's doing work. She's periodically watching The Voice. She's also shopping on Lulu. Lulu has an application that you can share. Well, she was happened to be looking at some summer sundresses. And she could share through Facebook the sundresses with her friends to get their opinions of the sundresses. Then she was texting how bad Usher was being as a judge. And then she got a text because Lulu has her phone number that if she buys one more or third sundress, they'll give it to her for half price. She goes, cool. And she was totally relaxed. And it was just totally fine. So we're going to live in this kind of digital world. And if you want to go deeper into that stuff, you should buy my book or come get one for free. Uh, all the royalties go to charity, the oldest orphanage in Boston where I live. I grew up in Cleveland, uh, going to sleep listening to CKLW on my transistor radio. Uh, 
when I met my wife in Ohio. Uh, she was from Boston, and uh, she listened to things like Joni Mitchell, and I was going, no, you got to come on, you know, the temptations, etc. cetera. And uh, I think um, entrepreneurs, I, um, w after we got married, we were living in Cleveland, and the river caught on fire. And so I'm not loyal, OK? I followed love. My wife said, Boston's cool. Would you come to Boston? And I said, OK, I'll try to get a job there. And I get a job at a big ad agency, but I'm writing news releases for Titleist golf balls. Now, I have a master's degree in 20th century British and American literature. And I spent a week editing a news release on why 386 dimples are going to make your ball go further or straighter. And I thought I was going to jump out the window. But what I did was, I, my wife was encouraging. We went to a party that first weekend in Cambridge. And I met a guy. He was barefoot and in a Hawaiian shirt. And he was talking to me and said he had started a software company. And I said to him, what software? And he said, why don't you come by my office? And I'll tell you what software is. And I said, OK. And uh, this was very odd, because I had just been working in Cleveland for like the typical corporate bully Fortune 500 company. All right? And all of a sudden, I'm with a guy named Mitch Kapoor, who had started a company called Lotus. And there was only about 40 employees. And there was a futon in his office and an IBM personal computer. And that's it. And he said, get down on the futon, Larry. And I got down on the futon, and he started to show me a product called 123. Anybody remember this product? Yeah. All right. And Mitchell uh, kept saying, do you get it? Do you get it? And I go, well, I'm not sure you know, that I get it. He goes, well, have you ever been to an accounting office? I said, yeah, my grandfather had a small business in Cleveland, that, and they all wore these green visors, and the lights came down, and they had general ledgers. And he said, yeah, did he ever get mad if somebody made a mistake? And I said, yeah, because he said if they didn't catch it, they'd have to go back and erase like months of numbers to get that right. He goes, well, this solves all that. And I immediately got what the software did. And from that day on, as I worked with probably over 1,000 entrepreneurs, some failed, some haven't. Some built huge companies like Apple. You know, I've noticed that they all picked at least one place to solve a problem. And I think that's what all core entrepreneurs have got to do. And I do think also a message that I'd like to give to you, Michigan, is that you have so many unique things around agriculture, tourism, automotive. I just was lucky enough to test drive a Tesla. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but in, I took the uh, overnight from Red Eye from San Francisco. But Elon Musk said, I, I said, this is a very nice car. And he said, it's not a car. I go, what do you mean? There's four wheels. I got in it. There's a car. He says, it's software. It just happens to be software that's embodied in a car. And I think, too, if you read anything that George Colony and Forrester Research are putting out they're saying every company will be a software company. It's the competitive advantage. And we had Joel Klein talking about you know, mathematics. I think kids should be understanding coding. I think they'd be understanding basic software development. Those tools are going to help change the music business even more. Apple's lost that right now to things like SoundCloud. So there's so much entrepreneurial opportunity to do. Uh, if we believe in the use of software for the car industry, for the energy industry, for urban planning, uh, information and biosciences, hugely dependent on software development. So I think that in that way, a, a great state like Michigan, I think, can come a long way in solving some of their issues. Uh, and. Um, a few other comments, and then I think I'll just take some, because I know I'm standing between you and the bar. Um, so, but I, I'd love to, I usually answer questions, but I'll have somebody come up. I can tell you some of the more interesting entrepreneurs are, were actually very engaging and very giving, and they all had attention disorders. Uh, so, and, but there were some like uh, 
Steve, that were really driven and knew exactly what they wanted to do. And I think there has to be core competencies, though. The Silicon Valley had silicon, all right? Uh, Boston and Cambridge had large computing uh, technology understanding. And I think this state has some of the greatest universities in understanding of the combination of science and information technology. You should be leading big time in that area. I think innovation in agriculture, how you're gonna, we're gonna feed the next billion people, two billion people would be another area that, uh, but you have to have a core competency, I think. So um, the other thing I would follow, this is my little lightning route, and then I'll sit down and take a few questions, and then you guys can go have your drink. Uh, all right, is that the two companies that are fighting for the heart and soul of the internet right now to watch are Google and Amazon. And I would, Google right now has its third largest office in Michigan. I'd push them even further to have more people here. I would push Amazon to have a huge office here. You're regionally located uh, to do that. I think Amazon's gonna win. I think they basically own the internet. And uh, they have 75% of the cloud at the moment. And he wanted to buy NASA. Uh, that's how crazy Jeff Bezos is, you know. And I, I would have sold it to him, wouldn't you? Nine billion dollars? You know, but um, the, so those two, and then other companies, I think Apple's had its day. I think it's a fashion company now. And I think it'll be the Gucci at, when we get smartphones at $50, they will not be, they'll be the high end uh, of what they're doing and they'll be taking over television. And then software companies will be very dominant in, in everything we do. So, but I'm very optimistic. There was a lot of speakers that I cut here that were a little less optimistic about the future. I think it's powerful future for young people right now. They understand the power of innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. Uh, and I do think you can teach entrepreneurship. We had this argument when I was on the board of Babson College uh, for 10 years, which is known for entrepreneurism. I think you can teach it. So um, I don't know if Mary Sue Coleman has entrepreneurship at the business school there or even in the undergrad school, but, uh, or at Michigan State. I met her the other week, Louisa, I think her name is. Yeah, all impressive women. Uh, and other schools, Wayne State, other, uh, other schools. So I'll shut up now, because I could keep going. And I'll invite my interviewer out. Please welcome Carol Kane, senior producer and host of CBS Detroit's Michigan.